It's wartime. It's wartime. Gather the troops, yeah, it's wartime. The most high is gonna have mercy on you, black Americans. If you return back to him, it's wartime. It's wartime. We are God's on this earth. We are God's chosen people. The black, yeah, it's wartime. Calling all Jews. What are your banks? Yeah. It's the same that was in Christ's bank. Where you say that don't matter? It's our job as the watchman to warn our people. Wake up from the lies that you're in. We must return as the Israelites, because that's who we are. You are now tuned in to Wartime Radio Show. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Hey, Shalom. This is Wartime Radio. My name is Officer Yawana Thun. And on my left, Officer Yuan Darkasat. On my right, Officer Kalaya. And our reader today, Officer Yanai. Hey, welcome to Wartime Radio, WPJM 800 AM. Hey, today's topic, can you make it to the kingdom without repentance? Nope. <laughs> I yeah. thought all you had to do was just call on the name of Jesus. Yeah, I thought, yeah just believe. Just all believe. you got to do is believe. You ain't got to do nothing. Just believe. That's what we've been taught. That's what these pastors continue to push, and that is a lie, not according to the Bible. So you tell me these pastors the lying, is this? Bro. What are you talking about? They lying. <laughs> they lying. And a lot of you out there, you believe that you have to do nothing to inherit the kingdom of heaven. You believe that you're going to live your life, and then you just go to heaven because you believe. Well, we're going to find out today what the scriptures say regarding repentance and the entrance into the kingdom of heaven. Oh, praises. Hey, but, you know, if we got to do something to get into the kingdom, let's just find out how we're going to find out. I mean, are we lying? Is the pastor lying? Hey, give me uh, Romans 15 and 4. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So the things that was written before time, the scriptures, it was written for our learning. Right. So we don't really have to trust the pastors, you know, calling on the name of Jesus. We actually can go into this Bible and find out the answer and the truth of how to get into the kingdom. See, our people don't believe that. Right. They don't believe that. They don't believe that they can actually go into the scriptures themselves and find out what this, this scripture says. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Read the rest of it. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. That's self-explanatory. Right. It's a language they don't understand. <laughs> they can't, it's, it's hard to discern. Right. And you know what? It's going to take patience. We got to actually take the time to actually go in these Bible, start studying and following the commandments that's written. I, I don't understand what people don't really get. If this is a book written for our learning, that there's going to be things that are written for us to do. Right. I mean, in order to learn something, that means you have to study it. Right. You have to read it. You got to read it. Not pastor uh, dictates to you, like we're going to see a little bit later on in the show, dictate to you what the scriptures say. You just sit back and say, mm-hmm, right. right. Hey, Zombies. Hey, that's like a, a vampire in Brooklyn. Evil. <laughs> Is good. Say it with me. <laughs> Evil is good. What the and, hell? I think it's a cult. Yo. And, and you know, uh, one of the things that I noticed that a lot of the churches, a lot of our people, they quickly say, that's the Old Testament. Right. As if we don't actually have to follow the whole book. Give me Isaiah 34, 16. Let's find out if the Bible say we don't need but half the book. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. And do what? And read. So the Bible is the book of the Lord and it is meant to be read. Right. <laughs> no one of these shall fail. Not one of these books shall fail. So the Old Testament got to be took. It's it got to be applied to this day. It ain't done away with, y'all. Right. It ain't done away with. Old Testament means just old contract. That's basically That's all it is. It's old contract. And then we have a new contract. 
the right. New Testament. Woo! Read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. So, you know, you don't have to go run, try to buy the books to see if you can prepare it to the Bible. This is all you need. And our people are caught up in that. They're quick to uh, uh, mention energy and chakras and, and all the different books and stuff that they, they've studied. Right. That has nothing to do with the one true book on the planet Earth that has our full history in it, what has happened to us in the past and what's going to happen to us in the future through the keeping of God's commandments to enter into the kingdom of heaven. They don't get that. Mm. Well, they don't get this next part right here. Read. For my mouth, it has commanded. You know, when he said my mouth, that's talking about the Lord. Right. The Lord commanded this book. This is his words. So you're telling that's me right. the, uh, the Caucasian man and the, uh, uh, all the other nations that have uh, took in this book and and, and and taking words out of it. You mean tell me they didn't write the book? Nah, they nope. have nothing to do with it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not one single thing. Our people don't really understand that. Hey, there's no man on this earth that could have written these prophecies, that could have told you our history, told you what each nation come from. Hey, these other nations, they don't have any problem knowing that, hey, this is where, where our nation began. You know, Hey, we are the children of Ishmael. We are the children of Cush. The so-called black man, Hispanic man, guess what? They don't want to be the children of God. No. They don't want to be the children of God. They want everybody to be the children of God. Hey, finish out that verse. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. So the Most High has put this Bible together for our learning for our instructions and in righteousness on how we're going to get to the kingdom. Let's get that real quick. Um, um, 2 Timothy 3.16 real quick. I'll praise I would like a, um, a Christian to explain what scriptures Paul is referring to here. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Was there a New Testament at the time that Paul wrote this? I don't, nope. I don't think so. So what <laughs> scripture is Paul referring to when he says, read it again. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. There was no book of Timothy, no book of Acts, no book of um, James, John, Revelations at the time that Paul wrote this letter to Timothy. Read. And is profitable so for telling you the scripture. Going into that Old Testament, the, the the Torah, the Psalms, Proverbs, and the Prophets are profitable for what? For doctrine. Go ahead. For reproof. Go ahead. For correction. Go, go ahead. For instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness, like the officer pointed out. What is righteousness real quick? Instructions in righteousness. So how do we find out what righteousness is? And it's going to go right back to one thing. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Mm -hmm. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. You got to keep the commandments. What is doctrine? Proverbs 4, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I give you good doctrine. It is profitable for doctrine. So the Old Testament that Paul was referring to here is going to tell you what that doctrine is. Go ahead. Forsake ye not my law. I have a Christian explain that then. That's it. Officer. Right. He said, forsake ye not my law. Well, hey, we got a pastor by the name of Creflo Dollar. Mm. Mighty, mighty dollar. Steph, Steph, that, Steph your dollar. Steal hey, your dollar. We want to bring this brother out and expose him as one of the false prophets that Christ was talking about. Take your dollar. Hey, this wrote this video, Creflo Dollar. God said, forsake not my law. Run that. Show you this is because truth in one dispensation may not be the truth in another dispensation. Uh, what may be true under the covenant oh, of law. Hold up right quick. Stop that. Truth 
in one this that don't make no sense. Hey, most black people have no idea what that word meant. So that's, that's full of hey, he done, he, he done, he done confused the whole church and they didn't say we said a deep word. Right. Stop it. Dispensation. Get some help. You got to believe him because he said dispensation. Exactly. Hey, that's why nobody say nothing when he be saying he'll throw a deep word out there and blow their mind off that deep word. They can't get past that. Right. Right. Look up the word dispensation. This is dispensation. Go ahead and read it. All right. Dispensation. Exemption from a rule or usual requirement. Right. Read the next one. Yeah, no. right. S- second definition. A system of order, government, or organization of a nation. So, go ahead, go ahead, bro. So he's talking about truth according to the old government, because that was the, the order or the government at that time. It's not truth according to the new covenant is what he's saying. That's, that's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. <laughs> that's what he's saying. <laughs> right. That's what he's, God, to make sure. right. God, God's truth changed. <laughs> right. But guess what? Your scripture, which you just read in uh, Second, uh, Second Timothy three sixteen, he said, "All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness." So, did God change from one testament to the Second Testament? Hey, give me that. Um, what it says, uh, God changed not. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord. I change not. So it's not going to change from one book to the next book. From one dispensation (laughs) to another. (laughs) God is not going to change. A Creflo is going to lead a lot of you all straight to the pits of hell. I'm telling you. He's going to lead you straight to destruction with these lies that he's pushing. Right. And give me Psalms 119, uh, verse 142. So we can understand what the truth is that he's actually trying to say changes. He's trying to change something, all right? All right. Change, right. change, get that, get that change to change from your hand to his. <laughs> so, chapter one nineteen, verse one forty two. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, uh-huh. and thy law, and thy what, and thy law, read, is the truth. What is the truth? Thy law. Is the truth. So he's trying to say that the law changed from one instance to the next instance. From one, one disposition to, to the, the next, next disposition. And that man is the devil. He's a liar. <laughs> he's a liar. Hey, finish out that video. So basically, he's trying May to keep not us from falling. true the law. under the covenant of grace. <clears throat> what may be true in the Old Testament may not be true under the New Testament. Uh, stop right there. Got to stop. Hey, so the God shall, shall not kill in the Old Testament don't work in the New Testament. Right. <laughs> hey, and let's get what grace is. Because yeah, yeah. our, our people have no idea what grace means unless they rent late. <laughs> then everybody know what grace means then. Mm-hmm. Because when you add can, can I get a little time to pay that rent? That's grace. That's grace. It give you a little time to get right. A little time to pay that light bill. There's a lot, a lot of y'all out there right now done gave this man 500 to to $1,000 of your hard-earned money and got home, could not pay your light bill, and you then you called a light company and said, hey, can I get an extension right. on my light bill? Right. That's grace. Right. You still got to pay. Woo! God has given us grace. He's giving us a chance to get right so he don't have to put us to death. Give me that Titus 2.11. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Now all men is the children of Israel. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. So that's what grace is supposed to do. Teach you to deny ungodliness. This is why you're supposed to be in these scriptures, studying, meditating, and keeping the commandments so you can deny ungodliness. Read. And worldly lust. And the worldly lust, the things of this world. How are you going to know what's the things of this world if you're not reading the scriptures? How are you going to know what things are righteousness if you're not studying the scriptures and applying them to your life? Read. We should live soberly. That's what we should be doing, living soberly instead of getting turned up every single day. Read. 
righteously uh -huh. and godly in this present world. So that's what grace is supposed to teach you, how to live godly in this present world. And right now, you know, we're wicked as can be. Our people are living in the midst of sin and following all the ways of this world. Right. Hey, let me uh, let me land back off here real quick. Re read verse 11 again. Verse 11. For the grace of God. Stop right there. For the grace of God. So where does the grace come from? The oh, grace God. comes from God, not the electric company. God is now giving you a grace, a specific time period to get yourself right. And you say, well, I ain't got nothing to get right for because, you know, I ain't got to, you know, that I ain't got to keep no commandments. You know, I ain't got to do that under the, under the New Testament. I ain't got to keep the commandments. Read that again. For the grace of God. Your time period, your extension for the repayment of sin is given to you by God. Read. That bringeth salvation. That bringeth what? That bringeth salvation. So you have an extended time to get yourself right for, for God. In order to get what? Salvation. Salvation comes through this grace. That means that in this time that you have grace, you got to be getting yourself together. So when you jump down to verse 2, read. I mean, verse 12. Verse 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness. Read, read the whole thing. And worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So if you got to live soberly and righteously, that means you can't be... That means you have to be living according to a specific standard or order given by God. Right. But if it don't, if the if the truth changes from one dispensation to the next, how can you do that? Unbelief. Can I get one? Okay, go ahead. Get, let me get one. Get first John three and four. And then get Romans six, verse one and two. First John three and four. Let's explain what sin is real quick to our people. And let's see if the law is done away with. First John chapter three, verse four, mm -hmm. whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law Go ahead. for sin is the transgression of the sin law Sin is the transgression of God's laws. When you break God's laws, you're in the midst of sin. Now go to Romans six, verse one. Hey, before you go there. So for you to sin, there must be a law. A, a law must be in place. Right. So we would never got that definition if the law was done away with. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Read that. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in shall sin? Shall we continue to break God's laws? Read. That grace may abound. Because we are under grace. Read. God forbid. Heck no. Heck no. Read. How shall we that are dead to sin? How shall we that are dead to sin? Meaning we realize that we've been in sin and we become that new creature. Begin to repent and turn from sin. Read. Live any longer therein. Live any longer therein. So it means that because you're under grace, you stop breaking God's laws. That goes into teaching us to deny sin, ungodliness, and right. worldly lust. Right. Listen, um, you know, if we don't take advantage of this grace that we've been given, you know, there's going to be much greater punishment. Give me Hebrews 10 and 29. Bring it out. I'll start at verse 28. 28, yeah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. Bring it he that despised Moses' law died without mercy. So when our people didn't keep Moses' law before grace came, you know, certain sins you got put to death. Like being a homosexual, you didn't get a chance to repent. There was no grace period. You That was death. You know, adultery, that was death. So we didn't have grace then. But now through Christ, we are given that grace. So they don't realize that what they don't teach and what Criflo ain't teaching is that these there were certain sins that you had to that you could shed animal blood for. Right. right. They don't understand the shedding of blood and then and Christ shedding his blood. So they just say, just believe. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Read. Verse 29. Verse 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye mm. shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the son of God. So how much more punishment you think you're going to get when the most high gave his son's life for you? And you say, you know what? I ain't keeping them laws. I'm good. I'm good. I, I believe. Right. <laughs> hey, they must don't understand the punishment that God will give you. We must don't really, we don't really fear God because hey, the things that the most high can do, you know, like kill your children, wipe your grandma right off the face of the earth. Hey, 
We, we take this grace period lightly. We still running around getting buck wild. Here we are in the last days and our people acting like they don't got a care in this world. And it's only our people that's doing this. Right. What are you telling them really to keep God's laws? It says, stop sleeping with every man that you see on the corner. Right. right. Brother, don't kill each other. Stop smoking and selling crack. This, this is what you want to do? Right. I mean, <laughs> go ahead, Austin. Sorry. Hey, finish that verse. And have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing. That's how our people is. Our people don't care about uh, the love of God. They don't care about the love of Christ. They don't care that Christ actually loved them enough to give his life for them. They say, hey, you know, it's an unholy thing. I don't believe in that book. That's a white man's book. Mm -hmm. that's, our, that's, our, that's the attitude of our people, even those that are sitting up in church. Because when we bring out these laws, hey, they ain't even got time to hear the Bible. They don't even want to hear the word of God. But they, what they really want to hear is a lot of singing and dancing. Now, right. All they want to hear is a lot of shouting. When, these, when this is the very thing and the only thing that's going to allow you to inherit the kingdom. I don't, right. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God without keeping the commandments. It's in the Bible. Real quick, <laughs> to digress. Let me get 2 Timothy 2.15. 2 Timothy 2.15. I wanted to pull it earlier, but you know, we, we ran off, kind of left the point. But I see fit to go back real quick. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Y'all read this scripture, but your pastor, he probably don't read it though. Read that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Read it out. Study. Do what? Study. No, let the pastor tell you. Study. No, listen to, listen to Creflo and T.D. Jakes. Study. Read on. To show thyself approved no, unto God. To, to show uh, Creflo approved. To show thyself approved unto God. Read on. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That means that you have to go in the scriptures when we go all the way back to Romans 15 and 4. With the, the things that are written for our time was written for our learning. You got to go within the scriptures and study for yourself. You got to study this and learn this for yourself so that you can apply God's laws as it is written in the Bible. Not by what Creflo tells you because he got a million dollars in a big church to sit you in and tell you what God says. The scripture says, study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you got to go here and you got to go there. You got to go in the Old Testament. You got to go in the New Testament. Not no dispensation of time. It changes. Right. <laughs> hey, give me Sirach 18 and 20. We're going to read out the Apocrypha, which is the 14 books that are missing from the Bible. It's canonical. Sirach chapter 18, verse 20. Bring it out. Before judgment, examine thyself. Before judgment, do what? Examine thyself. We got to find out if we're actually following this Bible. We got to actually find out if we're walking in righteousness. We want to get into the kingdom because you don't want the judgment of God to come upon you. You don't want to feel the wrath of God. You don't want to feel that eternal fire. So if you want to be saved, you're going to have to examine yourself. Is that it on that verse? And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Oh, the day of visitation, you want to find mercy. That's mm -hmm. what we all want. We all want to be given them white robes. That's the, right. The crown of life. We want that. Right. But first, we're going to have to examine ourselves to see if we're walking in righteousness. And the officer brought out simple what righteousness was, was keeping the laws. Hey, but hey, read verse 21. Verse 21. Humble thyself before thou be sick. Come on. And in the time of sins. Well, oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. In the time of what? In the time of sins. So if the law is done away with, right. there is no sin. Like you, if the law is done, that means that. Committing sin don't exist, right? Didn't Creflo say sin makes the law more? The law makes sin more powerful. Yeah, Something crazy. And, we, <laughs> and we didn't even get to that part, really, right? But we're gonna get to that. But right. re, re, read that part again. And in the time of sins, show repentance. So what is what, what is the whole Bible talking about repentance for? Even in the Book of Revelations, if we don't got to keep the commandments, the whole Bible is talking about repentance. Repentance is to look at the sins and the ill will that you were doing according to the uh, the law and turn away from it. So what, what what are these pastors talking about? And these are people that you believe. So you don't believe us because we ain't rich enough, you know. 
<laughs> we ain't got no jets and, and we ain't fancy enough for you. But you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pay for them sins. It, it ain't actually they don't believe in us. They don't believe in the word of God. They don't believe God. in the word of God. That's why we stay in these scriptures. Because you ain't gonna be able to say, Well, you know, them brothers up there lied to me. You're gonna have to sit there and say, you know what, God, I heard what you said. I heard what you said. And you know what I said? Mm -mm, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. I got something else better to do. I got something better than keep your laws. I want money. I want fame. And that's what our people do. They searching for money. What? They searching for fame. Look, look, they 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 want likes on on social media, on Instagram. We act a fool for a little one minute, uh, a little bit of fame. Did you see me on TikTok? Right. You see how many likes I got? And we'll be doing something the most ignorant stuff they imaginable. That's that's our people. Now, I can't believe how much we don't fail as a nation. The greatest people that ever walked the earth. Now we're the biggest clowns that walked the earth. Right. Nothing. And we we done made uh, people rich off our foolishness. From uh, what's the show? When I'm not the father. Maury. Maury. Yeah, yeah, Maury uh, Povich. Hey, we done made we done made Edomite so rich off of our foolishness, off of our sin. They profit off of our wickedness. Right. And let me get uh Sirach 17, verse 25. Sirach chapter 17, verse 25. Return unto the Lord. You know, this this God has been telling us this from the from the beginning of the book. So when we first fell off. Most high God has been telling the children of Israel, return unto me. Right. But we have been steadfastly following the oppressor and the other nations and the things that they do, and we've forsaken our God. We've not done the things according to God. And in these churches today, you are not doing according to the will of God. Let's just face it. You're going to go and celebrate Halloween. You, some of y'all celebrated Halloween this week because by the time you're the show, it'll be passed. You celebrated Halloween. You're not doing according to the will of God. Read it again. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Mm. There it is again, forsaking our sins. Read. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. And offend less. Offend less, meaning look at what you're doing and understand that it's in opposition to what the Lord has set up for, the, for his chosen people, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And turn away from it, forsake them things, and sin less. You can, you can lessen the amount of sin that you're committing over time by just looking at the commandments and, and say, you know what? I ain't got to do that. That's against the law. I'm not going to do that. I can stop doing that today. He, he said forsake thy sins or did he say, you know, confess my name? He said, <laughs> read, read it again. Like, hey, because we're going we're gonna to let the, the Bible be true and not us. Read right. it again. Sirach chapter 17, verse 20. Five. Read it out. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. I didn't say that. You didn't say that. <laughs> Read on. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Offend less. Read verse 26. Just go ahead and complete it. Turn again to the most high and turn away from iniquity. Sin. For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health. And hate thou abomination vehemently. See, they don't want to do that. They don't want to hate the abominations that they're in. They love them abominations. Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. You love those things. Mosai said, turn away, seek his face, and you need to hate those things. Mm. Woo. Hey, give me second Ezra 9 and 7. God said, forsake your sin. They don't want to do that. They mad. Right now. <laughs> you can't judge me. We're going to judge you anyway, regardless of what you say. We're going to tell you in sin. Trying to save your life. That's love. Right. People don't like that real love. They like, like that fake love. They don't like tough love. Like They, they like flowers and candy. Mm -hmm. right. Read. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 7. Read it out. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his work. To be able to escape by what? His work. So for you to be able to escape the judgment of God, you're going to have to do works. So let's find out what those works is. Give me Exodus 18 and 20. Bring it out. Exit. You, know, you know, faith without works is death. <laughs> so let's find out what is the works that we need to be doing. Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. Bring it out. 
And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Oh, ordinances and what? And laws. You're supposed to teach people ordinances and laws. What? Read. And shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. Uh huh. And the look, these ordinances and laws is it the way that you should walk? You know, love thy mother and thy father. You know what I'm saying? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. No, what's wrong with that? Thou shalt not commit adultery. What is wrong with these things? <laughs> what is, what is <laughs> the problem, what the problem bro? Is. <laughs> love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thine soul. Right. <laughs> Keep the find one day and don't buy and sell. Hey, read it from the top. Exodus chapter 18, verse 20. Read it out. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. You know, that that part, that key, teach. You know, you're going to have to study to teach someone. That's what you brought out. Study shall thy self approve. A workman that shall not be ashamed. Guess what? If you study, you're going to know how to teach those laws. You won't be ashamed when your child asks you something. Why is this happening? Why is this going on? Why did it, why did this man cheat on me? Why did, can I keep a man? You know, all these things that our people ask is because they don't know the laws. They don't have any knowledge and wisdom. Read. And shall show them the way wherein they must walk. Uh-huh. And the work. And the what? And the work. So these laws, ordinances, commandments, that's the work. Right. Read. That they must do. That's what you must do. That's the work. Go back that's to that it. verse in Second Ezra. Yeah, that's it. Second Ezra chapter nine, verse seven. Bring it out. And every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works, uh huh, and by faith, whereby ye have believed. Hey, with that, we're gonna take us a short break. We'll be right back with you. This is Wartime Radio, WPJM eight hundred. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.
Welcome back to Wartime Radio. My name is Officer Yuanathan, and on my left, Officer Yuanathan Kasat. On my right, Officer Kalaya. And our reader, Officer Yaanai. Our praises. Hey, we're going to get back to Creflo Dollar. Let's run that video. Because you know, look, we just brought out a verse. We're going to be saved by our works. And the works is the laws, statutes, and commandments. So let's see what Creflo say. All right, let's read 56 out loud together. Ready to read. The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin... What's the strength of sin? What strengthens sin? The law. Stop right there. Stop right there. I, for you listeners out there, I want you to really pay attention to how you're getting indoctrinated. Run that little clip back again. Here we go. Run that back real quick. He said, what strengthens sin is the law. Run that back real quick. All right, let's read 56 out loud together. Ready to read. The sting of death is sin. And the strength yeah, of sin, <laughs> what's the strength of sin? <laughs> what strength is sin? You see, how, you see how he is indoctrinating you? Mm -hmm. He's making you say it to yourself so that you can believe that sin, that the law strengthens sin. Like, what the hey, hell? What it was like 999 this? zombies and that one dude in the corner like, yo, I got to get out of here. Right. <laughs> He's looking like, like what, what are you reading at? I, I don't see that nowhere. <laughs> How can what? a law that tells you thou shalt not kill strengthen the sin of killing? Right. Unbelievable. The law tells me, brother, I should not hate you. How can a law that tells me not to hate my brother strengthen the hatred that I may have for my brother? Who you are that? absolutely crazy if you believe this guy. Go ahead, right. go ahead and play on, man. He's smirking too. Like, look. All right, let's read 56 out loud together. Ready to read. I got him. I got him. The sting of death is sin. And the strength <laughs> of sin, what's the strength of sin? What strength is sin? The law. The law of Moses is what strengthens sin. Absolutely wrong. The law of Moses hey. is what strengthens hey. sin. Hey, like, well, let's get what Christ say about that. Give me John 5. Hey, let's find out. This is crazy. The law. Sin. I can't even. I don't even know what you're what saying. Strengthens, what strengthens sin? <laughs> the law. What strengthens <laughs> sin? The law. Yo. They are actually saying, Zombies. you you going to die. Period. If you believe that, there is no kingdom of heaven for you. Simple as that. You got it, Yana? Uh, you want verse 46? Yes, sir. John chapter 5, verse 46. For had ye believed Moses, if you believed the law, ye would have believed me. You would have believed Christ. Read. For he wrote of me. The laws that uh, Moses wrote, it came from Christ. Ooh. The things that Moses wrote, prophecies and all that, it came from Christ. So this, what is this man trying to say? This man is a liar and is all about lining his pockets with the money from these individuals in that church. That's what he that's what he's doing. Watch that. But this this right here lets you know where where our people stand. Read the next verse. Verse 47. But if ye have if ye believe not his writings, uh -huh, like he's sitting there telling you to do, how shall ye believe my words? You ain't gonna believe Christ. And guess what? Our people don't believe Christ. And that's what they stuck at. That's Ooh. that's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. That's what they stuck at. They don't believe Moses' writings. What do you think Christ was teaching? Thank you. <laughs> our, our people have yet to get their understanding that when Christ was reciting things, he was reciting the Old Testament. The he was time. reciting you the laws. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, those commandments that Moses written, they was written. He got that from Christ. Moses just didn't make these things up and say, you know what? I got a, I got a million people. You know what? I'm just going to make up these laws because I'm, right. so, I'm so knowledgeable and so wise. Can, let me see what I can fool them with. Right. <laughs> Bruh. Our people crazy. What you want to bring out, officer? Um, you can get. I really have much right now. Not right now. Well, let's go into repentance real quick. Repentance. Hey, what, hold on. Was that in the yeah, video? Hold on. Hold on. No. Hold on. It was, was that? Yeah, play the, play the yeah, next little piece. Up. Play the next little piece. Sin. 
the law of Moses is what strengthens sin. And remember in Romans chapter 7 and 8, sin takes opportunity when the law is in place. Stop right there. What? Read. Just Bro, get what Romans. What are you talking about, man? No, we ain't gonna jump. We ain't jumping to verse eight. We gonna start at verse seven. Say, say that again, officer. Romans, Romans chapter se Romans chapter seven and verse seven. Romans chapter seven, verse seven. Bring it up. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? So this is the question that Paul is asking. It just like uh, what Creflo Dollar is trying to exp what he's trying to explain, but he's explaining all wrong. Read it again. What shall we say then? So what shall we say about the law? Read. Is the law sin? Is the law sin? Does the law strengthen sin? <laughs> does the law strengthen sin? Read. God forbid. Hell no, the law right. does not strengthen sin. The law does not strengthen sin. Read. Nay, I had not known sin. Paul said, I had not known what sin was. But by the law. If it wasn't for the law. Just right. like every single one of us here. Yeah. Right. We, none of us would know what sin was if we did not find out what God's laws meant or what God's laws are. We would still be in the midst of adultery. Right. We would still be in the midst of fornication. We would still be in the midst of all reveling. We would still be in the midst of sin if we had not known what the law is. Right. Read on. Finish that. For I had not known lust. Except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So how can the law strengthen sin when the law explains to you what sin is? What the hell is this? It's that simple. Now read verse 8. Verse 8. But sin, taken occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. So read that one more time. But sin, taking occasion... By the commandment. So Paul says, but sin now, taken occasion by the commandment, read. Wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. He says, it wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Because Paul, he had no idea of the things that he was that was he, he was experiencing within him own self. Read. For without the law, sin was dead. He said, for without the law. What what did we just what did the Bible just say the law is? We just read that all the way back in. In Deuteronomy six, it's it's what keeps us righteous. Right, it's what keep it's what keeps us in line with the with what the with what the Most High God has in place for us. Paul That's says, right. He says, for I had not known, no, uh, it wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. Concupiscence is what sexual lust, right? Sexual desire. Anybody that know Paul know that he was dealing with what? He was dealing with lust. Right. Read on. About that bottom part? For without the law, sin was dead. He said, for without the law, sin was dead because he was in the midst of that thing. He was right. committing that thing. So it was dead to him because he had no idea. He, he didn't understand what it was he was dealing with within him. Go ahead, officer. Hey, jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Wherefore? The law is holy. No, it strengthens sin. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes, I mean, it makes, it well, makes sin well, stronger. Right. right. That's crazy. The law is holy. Read. And the commandment holy. Uh-huh. And just and good. So what is Creflo talking about? He just want to deal with now, that. Dog. He just want to deal with that first part. Come on, man. So the law is holy. The commandment's holy, just and good. So if you want to know what good is, it's the keeping of the laws. Because if you was married... I guarantee you, you don't want your husband or your wife to commit adultery. Right. That's a good thing. It ain't a bad thing. That's something you can plainly understand. Hey, matter, jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual. The law is what? The law is spiritual. So somebody say, I got the spirit of God. You better be keeping these laws because that's what spiritual is. It's the keeping of the laws. Right. Read. But I am carnal, mm -hmm. sold under sin. That's heavy. Right. That's heavy. So we got to understand that the laws is holy. The laws is righteousness. And hey, you was holding something, Kasai? Um, yeah. I just wanted to go over what, what was Christ teaching the people? You know, um, and what was he expounding on? Get Luke 24, verse 27. For some reason, 
Creflo keeps talking about the old covenant, the old testament, and that we're not supposed to go in there and that's done away with. But what did Christ teach when he walked the earth? Read that, Luke 24, verse 27. Luke chapter 24, verse 27. Bring it out. And beginning at Moses. So Christ taught Moses. We just read that Paul taught Timothy that all scripture dealing with the with the Old Testament. Go ahead. And all the prophets. And all the prophets. Isaiah, that's what Creflo was reading from. How can Creflo read from Isaiah and now act like it's done away when it doesn't matter? Read. Right. He expounded unto them in all the scriptures. In all the scriptures. Read. The things concerning himself. Right, so Christ taught the Old Testament, which says everything about keeping the Most High's laws, statutes, and commandments. He taught repentance, not to break the laws. Mm. So let's find out how do one repent? Because that was given. Give me a Luke 13 and 3 since we're in this chapter. Luke. Chapter 13, verse 3. Bring it out. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent. Except we do what? Except ye repent. Turn away from our sin. Ye shall all likewise perish. All likewise perish. So how do one com uh, be converted? How do we repent? Hey, this thing is almost comical. Right. Because <laughs> you let Creflo tell it, the law strengthens sin. Right. But you just read that. It says, I tell you, nay, except ye repent, you got you, your repentance is done by the law. Right. You repent according to the law. Oh, you can't make this stuff up, man. Mm. Give me uh, Psalms 19 and 7. Because I see said, repent. Since y'all all out like there saying, you know, hey, we all sinners, brother. We all sin. We all you fall sin. short. Right. They all fall what short. Part, where's the converted part, though? <laughs> right. They always skip that part of it. Right. They, they skip that one, though. They just going to stay sinners. Just do, I'm a, we all fall short. I'm going to just stay in my sin. <laughs> Bruh, the I, Lord I'm, know I believe. Okay. I missed the mark. Okay. What is Come missing on the now, mark? Dog. Okay. <laughs> Read. This, Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Bring it out. The law of the Lord is perfect. Is what? Is perfect. It strengthens sin. <laughs> Is perfect. <laughs> no, brother Creflo said it's strength and sin. The law of the Lord is perfect. He, you hear that? The law of the Lord. They ain't never read that. You it's know why? No. <laughs> they never read that, officer. They did not know that that scripture was in the Bible. Bro, it's right. the Old Testament. What? The Old Testament's not the Bible. Bro. Right. That's what. They, that's what they're gonna say. <laughs> hey, like, yo, you wait, they be saying the law of Moses. They said it. They read it again. The law of the Lord is perfect. Uh huh. Converting the soul. What does the law do? Converting the soul. It's going to convert you into a righteous individual. Right. The law of the Lord is going to get you into the kingdom in the faith in Christ. Right. Read. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Uh huh. Making wise the simple. It's going to do what? Making wise the simple. A simpletons, that means you slow. Right. There's a lot Baby of simple dumb. Christians out there, too. <laughs> right. Baby mamas. Right. Simple. The laws give you wisdom. Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 5 to prove that. See, through our ignorance, through us not knowing the laws, people like Creflo Dollar become rich and even let you know what he all about by his name alone. And we still go up in there and give him our hard-earned dollar. Read Deuteronomy chapter four, verse five. Bring it out. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, mm -hmm. even as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do so in the land, whether you go to possess it. So these laws, statutes, and commandments were given so you can do them. Read. Mm -hmm. Keep therefore and do them. Uh -huh. For this is your wisdom. This is your what? Your wisdom. No, this is your sin. Your wisdom <laughs> and your understanding in the sight of the nations, uh -huh. which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. They people say, don't want that, though. They, they don't, don't want, want that. Be, they don't want to be known as wise and understanding. They want to be known as thoughts, <laughs> right. uh, 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 gangsters, dope boys. gangsters, dope boys, and hustlers. Mm. Job uh, turkeys, other, in other words. Right. Damn jive, doggone jive turkey. 
Hey, jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgment so righteous as all this mm. law, which I set before you this day? <laughs> he said, what nation is so great that I have given these laws to? That was you, black man, Hispanic man, Native American. You are the Israelites. God gave those laws to you. Exactly. That's who the laws were given to you. So That's you right. could be called great in this earth. So you could rule this earth. So you can have a chance to get into the kingdom. Hey, get um, get you done? Yeah, go ahead. Get, get 2 Peter 3 verse 9. Because you're bringing out the, the attributes of the kingdom of heaven and our people want that. They want eternal life. Well, some of them don't, I guess. But um, you, they say they want they the kingdom they, of they heaven. They say they do. They say right. But they don't want to do what's required to get it. Right. They, 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 the same fact, way a lot of them got their high school diploma by not going to class, not doing no work. <laughs> In fact, I say it like this. A lot of them will do what's necessary to get the kingdom of God because the scriptures tell us, our people, we got a zeal for serving God. Right. But when you are taught the wrong uh, 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 direction, when you're led in the wrong direction for serving the Most High God, when you're led in the wrong direction for inheriting the kingdom of heaven, and you believe that, then guess what? You are, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. So I will say, they do say they do say that they want to inherit the kingdom of God, but they are not doing it because they're taught it wrong. Right. They're doing it. They're going by trying to inherit the kingdom the wrong way, which they ain't doing nothing. That's why them pastors is going to burn. Yes. Yo. And the Bible says that. They're going to burn. Read that. Uh, Second Timothy, Second Peter, excuse me, chapter 3, verse 9. Read it out. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. His promise is that if you keep his laws and endure unto the end, you will make it to the kingdom of heaven. Ooh. You will be delivered from the hands of your enemies, your oppressors. Read. As some men count slackness. Because they think that because it's taken a while for the most out of, for our deliverance to happen, that it's never going to come. We count as slackness. Read. But it's long suffering to us. If the most high came right now, 99% of us would be put to death. Right. right. He's long suffering to us to get ourselves together. That's that That's grace. The, thank you. That's that mercy. That That's is the, the grace. grace and mercy. Read. That's right. Not willing that any should perish. Most I doesn't want any of us to perish. Read. But that all should come to repentance. All should change and come to repentance and come back to keeping his laws, statutes, and commandments. Woo. That's how you get the kingdom of heaven. And how are you going to repent if you're not keeping the laws? Thank hey, you. Hey, 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 hey. No such thing. Hey, <laughs> let me let me get Ma uh, Matthew four seventeen. <laughs> Bring it out. Hey, hey, hey. He just said something, bro. <laughs> how you going? How you going to repent if you ain't keeping the commandments? Right. How you going to get the kingdom of heaven if you're not keeping the commandments, bro? It, it's impossible. Read that. Matthew chapter 4, verse, you said 17. 17. 17. From that time, Jesus began. Hold on. Who? So read from, that again. From that time, Jesus began to preach. And what he said? And to say, repent. Do what? Repent. Why? For the kingdom of the heaven. what? For the kingdom of of heaven is at hand. So in this one verse, in verse 17, Crazy. you got the word repent and kingdom of heaven. Repent, that's the title of the day. That's today's topic. Right. In this one verse, you got repent and the kingdom of heaven. So that means that Christ is lying if you let T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollar tell the story. What, what? This, what Christ said is not what, because, you know, it changed over, you know, the truth changes from dispensation to dispensation. Right. You better <laughs> shut your black Christian mouth. But here Christ saying, if you want to get the kingdom of heaven, you better repent. Mm. Give me first Peter's form. Uh, let's start at verse two. First Peter's chapter four, verse two. Bring it out. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, uh -huh. but to the will of God. So we got to start living in towards the will of God. And what is the will of God? Let's get that. Give me Psalms 48. We got to stop wanting to do our own thing. Psalms chapter 40, verse 8. Bring it out. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Uh -huh. Yea, thy law 
is within my heart. The what? Thy law is within my heart. So, right. <laughs> bang, bang. Bang, bang. The will of God is to keep the laws. <laughs> what, what is so hard for our people to understand? Uh, they don't get it, man. That's what God gave you. He gave you the laws. He said, you know what? God knows my heart. But well, the laws better be written on the heart. You can't do all them laws. <laughs> right. You can't do all the laws. So that means, I guess, you can't do all of them, so don't don't even try to so do So don't them. even try. <laughs> Ain't go, nobody got time go for that. Go back to uh, First Peter. Give me that verse 3. First Peter chapter 4, verse 3. Bring it up. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. See, if we wasn't doing the will of God, guess what we was doing? We was following the other nations. That's exactly what we were doing now. Easter, Thanksgiving, breaking all God's laws. Because when the Bible says the earth is given to the hand of the wicked, guess what? Now you're following the Gentiles because mm -hmm. we're not ruling the earth no more. That's so you're doing the will of the Gentiles, which goes against God. Because they hate your God and they hate you. Woo! Read. The will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness. So guess what? What is the will of the Gentiles? To walk in sexual sin. Read. Lust. Uh-huh. Ex excess of wine. Being drunkards. That's our people. Wake up early in the morning to get drunk and drink all day and all night on that corner getting blazed. Read. Revelings. What do our people like doing? Reveling. That's what the Gentiles do. Reveling. Woo. Read. Banqueting. Uh huh. And abominable idolatries. So abominable idolatries. That's what our people follow. When you follow Christianity, hey, you follow these religions. You are following these abominable idolatries because they don't have a God. Right. Right. Read. Where when they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot. See, they think it's strange when you actually start keeping God's laws. Right. When you start keeping the feast days. When you start keeping Passover, first fruits, feast of tabernacles. You start keeping the laws. They say, well, are you in a cult? Right. They say, well, what you, you're what, not going to sleep with her until you get married? Right. They start what are you thinking doing? it's strange. Read. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. What do they do? Mm. Speaking evil of you. Hey, man, he in a cult. He crazy. Hey, you're the bad guy. Hey, that guy. hey, hey. I don't got nothing to do with him, man. He always right. talking about that Bible. Man, you, they don't, hey, they, they, he go. Don't say nothing, bro. Right. Don't, don't say Telling nothing. Telling me not to smoke no weed. Don't say nothing about the Bible, y'all. Hey, you got a scripture house? Yeah, let me get uh, Acts 5 and 30. Yeah, start at, at yeah, Acts 5 and 30. Because when you say, when, when you're listening to Creflo, this is essentially what he's saying. He's trying to make you believe that just believing in Christ is going to get you the kingdom of heaven. Bruh. Yet you do, yet you make null and void the purpose of Jesus Christ. Right. When you do that, he came for nothing if you just believe, all you got to do is believe on him. Right. That means that you really don't believe in, these, in this Bible. <laughs> Read that. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom he slew and hanged on a tree. Now, we know the God of our fathers, if you've been following and if you believe this Bible, this is talking about the God of Israel, the God of our fathers, That's you right. blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right, read. Him hath God exalted. He with exalted Jesus Christ. Come on. With his right hand to be a prince and a savior. And a what? And a savior. Uh-huh. For to give repentance. To give what? To give repentance. We done smashed this whole hour telling you that repentance is to, it, repentance comes by the law. It, there's no such thing as the law strengthens sin. Repentance comes through keeping God's laws. Right. right. Read that part again. For to give repentance to Israel. Uh-huh. And forgiveness of sins. And forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins comes through repenting by keeping God's commandments. It's just as simple as that. Hey, with that, this has been Wartime Radio. My name is Officer Yuanathan. My name is Officer Yuanathan Kassad. Officer Kalaya. Officer Yaana. Hey, with that, we say shalom. 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 Yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. Follow us on all social media platforms at IUIC Columbia, South Carolina. Join our congregation every Saturday at 4 p.m. Located at 1823 Greg Street, Columbia, South Carolina.
For more information, call us at 803-708-4861 at extension 237. Share our show with your friends and family. And thank you again for tuning in to Wartime Radio Show. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>